Hello, and welcome to the Learn to Code podcast here at One Month. My name's Chris, and in this episode, I'm going to tell you how to learn SQL, or some of the best ways that I think are out there for you to get started learning SQL. In a previous episode here on the Learn to Code podcast, I talked about some of the top reasons why SQL is so popular and what a database is and kind of all the basics. And so it might help if you listen to that or if you have a sense of what SQL is already, because I'm not going to cover that. I just want to jump right into, you know, how do you learn the programming language SQL? So in one quick se- second, I'll say, what is SQL? It is the programming language of databases, right? So again, listen to that other episode if you want more about what SQL is. Okay. Um, so how do we learn SQL? Well. Here are my top five recommendations for how to learn SQL. I've mentioned before that I was able to teach myself SQL in just a few weeks, and here are the steps that I did to be able to do that, and I'm gonna share that with you. Okay, so number one, how to learn SQL. Get a database. (laughs) If you're gonna learn the language of databases, you need to get a database. Here's how you get a database. It's not hard and it's pretty much free. Okay. So in able to get a, in order to get a database, um, well, first you need to choose a database. I would suggest just going with MySQL. That's M Y S Q L. MySQL is the way you say that. MySQL is the most popular database. It powers, I don't even know what percent of the web, like most of the web. It's very popular. Um, and any WordPress site, Facebook started on it, lots of different sites are using MySQL. It's very, very popular. Uh, So MySQL, uh, it's free and open source, and there are a few different ways that you can get it. So way number one is if you have what's called shared hosting or web hosting, you have access to a SQL database, right? You'll be able to spin one up, as they say, okay? Um, So how do you get that? Well, the easiest way and the way I recommend is if you go to hostgator.com. Hostgator.com is, it's one of the cheapest and also has pretty decent, pretty good support. I'm not going to overpromise there. It's, it's pretty cheap. So, um, but they have good support and they are able to answer your questions and get you set up. And I have a coupon code that makes it one cent for a month, which I think is really great because you can kind of just basically try it. It's the cheapest option that I've found. And then after that, it's maybe something like or a few bucks a month uh, if you want to keep with it. So that's one of the cheapest ways that that I've seen out there. I think it's pretty good. I'll put a link in some notes down below or in the in the show notes for this. You can just kind of click on the podcast or go to learn.onemonth.com where I'll put more about this. But yeah, basically, if you do that, you should be able to get an account and just, just give it a try and spin up a database. And that is one of the easiest ways to learn. So get web hosting. You can use HostGator if you already have hosting with some other popular companies like I would say Bluehost is popular, Media Temple is popular. Um, You'll be able to spin this up for free. So more notes on that. Or alternatively, you can use something called MAMP. That's M-A-M-P. It's kind of fun to say. MAMP. (laughs) Um, So MAMP, what MAMP is, is it's a server that you can download to your computer and run everything locally, locally meaning on your computer. So you're not actually connecting to the internet when you use this database, you're doing it locally. So that's MAMP, you can use it for Mac or Windows. The setup is, it takes a little bit of time and I've seen students, I've run this with 60 students in the room all at once doing this and definitely a dozen are very confused and it you know because because it depends on the computer especially on windows it can get a little bit confusing about where it's installing things but in short um this is a free way that you can get set up on that you can google it and i believe we even have some setup videos for free at one month's youtube page again i'll put all links to all the stuff down below to help you out with that so uh Yeah, in short, get a database however you can, a SQL database, and that would be the first way uh, because you need a database in order to play with it, in order to run the language, in order to, what I would say, break it 
uh, the way I learned to code is just taking other people's code and breaking it. Basically just like changing one line. Whoa, what does that do? Right. Adding, adding something to it, taking something away and just kind of tinkering with it. Literally that's how I learned. Uh, you can start to understand the language if you just go into other people's work and what a better way than to just have a database and to be able to kind of tinker with it. Which brings me to my number two tip on how to learn SQL. Use data. You need data, right? Um, so before you even get to the language, you need some data to begin to query, to begin to add things to, right? Um, so I am going to give you a free data set. I'll put it down in the link again uh, of this podcast if you're listening to this podcast. If you can't find that, uh, again, I'll put it at learn.onemonth.com, the blog for one month, and you can just, just find this episode on the blog, and I'll put a link to it um, down below. With this data set, it will be a .sql file, and you can import it into the database you correct uh, you just made. So download this and bring it into the database that you just made, that we just got, and you will be able to play with that data and run SQL commands. Another really good way to get data for your database is to install WordPress. It is a free data set that you can use. Where do you get WordPress? Again, if you have signed up for hosting with something like hostgator.com, you will be able to do what's called a one-click install. So you get Hostgator, you log into the C panel, which is the control panel, and click one-click install for WordPress, and you will it will instantly make you about 10 or 11 tables of data in your SQL database that you can play with. If this sounds really complicated, just make some notes, slow this down or listen to it again. But this is basically the path that I started and how I learned SQL and what I think would be beneficial to you. Get a database, get some data, import it, just press the import button, and now you have data to play with. So now it makes learning the language a lot easier, okay? So you have the two prerequisites, I'd say. Now let's get into the language, right? How do you learn the language? So here are some tips on places that you can go to learn the SQL language. Um, one, I would say, is the book that I used to learn is called Learn SQL in 10 Minutes. I believe it's by Sam's or something like that. <laughs> check it out. Uh, there's a lot of different SQL books out there. I also like the Head First series. Um, you can check that out. I think the book is a little bit dated now, but the language of SQL hasn't changed in so many years that I'm sure it's it's perfectly fine to use. So those two books um, I used early on and found very helpful. I also did a lot of Googling. A really great site for learning SQL is W3Schools. W3Schools has... They write out all of the SQL commands, pretty much all the SQL commands that exist. And there's really only 30 at most, and you probably use 20 like regularly. It's not that many commands. The cool thing about W3Schools, again, you can Google all of this or I'll put the links down below, but the cool thing about W3Schools is you can go there and in real time, you can write queries in the website and look at data and manipulate data and get a sense of what is happening uh, and how the commands, again, tinkering and breaking it, they give you some s suggested commands, press run, now change a few things. What happened? You can figure this out. This is how I learned. Uh, and this is, I think, one of the easiest ways to learn. Um, of course, we also have a course at one month. If you go to onemonth.com, there's a SQL course I teach. Um, that's another great way to learn. There are a variety of different ways out there that you can learn SQL. Um, I would say these are some of my favorite ways. So check that out. Um, and number four, I would say, is talk to a friend, find a friend, go to a meetup, do whatever you can to to really be able to look at real data sets and try the stuff out on data. Uh, I'm sure you have a friend out there that owns a business and has a lot of data and would, has some questions about it and would love somebody, you know, assuming it's not too private or sensitive of data, would love somebody to import it into the into the database you now have and just kind of play with it, run, run some questions. You know, who, what users are purchasing the most? Are there any patterns? Are they coming from certain places? You know, what kind of activity are they doing on the site? Um, what is retention uh, of, of certain cohorts of people that come? You can Google all of these things I'm saying, and these, there are blog posts about every single thing, I'll, you know, that I'm talking about. I just take some time maybe to kind of put it all together, but find a friend who needs some SQL help. If you, 
have the basics. If you've done everything that I've already suggested, you have a database, you have some data sets, uh, and you've gone through some of these resources, these books, or you've taken my course or whatever it is. Um, by that point, you have the fun foundations that I would even say a site like Upwork is really great. You can go to Upwork and you'll see there are people out there who are willing to pay and saying, Hey, I need some help with, I need, I'm looking for somebody that knows SQL. Um, what they don't know is that SQL is this language that you can learn in less than a month and uh, and you can't really make too many mistakes with it unless you delete things. Just be careful about that. But otherwise, you know, it, it's a pretty forgiving language that you can play with data, query, search, go through data and um, and help somebody out. So maybe, you know, that's what I suggest to my students. I suggest now that you have some SQL skills, this is the time to apply that. Go and post yourself, post your resume up on Upwork and see, even if it's just, even if you got like $10 or $5, it doesn't even matter about the money, just get the experience, right? So that's what I always suggest. Cause if you have the experience, then you'll, then you'll start to, it'll become second nature to you and you'll know how to use it. Um, so those are the processes that I went through to learn SQL. I guess I'll add one more thing is at some point I also had a deadline, which is, and this is a whole story, but I basically got a job out of college that was way in over my head <laughs> and I knew some basics, but, uh, it really required me to kind of like take my coding skills to the next level in a professional way. Um, so that was really helpful as well. So if you have a deadline or you have a job lined up, it's going to put a little pressure under you to really kind of ramp up these skills and, and, uh, and go out of your comfort zone. So that's how I learned SQL. Uh, I was able to do it, like I said, in, in less than a month. And if you have any questions uh, about SQL, you can you can post them on the blog for this podcast. It's learn.onemonth.com. Check that out there. There's a bunch of other free episodes here on the podcast, the Learn to Code podcast. Uh, and like I mentioned, I'll put all the links down below as well as a link to the SQL course that I teach if you're interested in that. That's also another option as well. Best of luck learning to code. Best of luck learning SQL. Um, if you have any questions for us here at One Month, you can email teachers at onemonth.com. And I hope you have a great day. Peace.